Hi folks, I'm Dave from Polypad, and in this video, I am gonna show you two ways to model fraction multiplication on Polypad, so students have a visual of what fraction multiplication means, and they can then take this canvas and create a variety of examples as they begin to make some generalizations about what happens when you multiply fractions. So I'm gonna do two examples of 3 fourths times 5 six one with the area model, and another example where I rename the fractions, and then I'll share with you how students could then take this canvas and work through a number of different examples to try to find some generalizations. So here we go, 3 fourths times 5 six. I'm gonna think of this in this first example here of 3 fourths of the fraction 5 six. And the first way I'll do it is in the area model. So I'm going to grab um, a sixth fraction bar and put it in the top spot here. I'll use the handle at the bottom of the fraction bar to change it to five sixths and do the same with a fourth fraction bar. I want three fourths and I want that to be at the bottom and I'll place it over here in, in the second spot. Now, so this, pinkish square represents a whole, we're doing 3 fourths out of 5 six. So just as a first visual, I might do something like this with students, saying there's 5 six. I've taken that whole and I've split it up into 5 six. I only want 3 fourths of that, so it's something like that. And maybe here I would pause and have students try to make an estimate of what that blue square is in comparison to the whole square. I don't know, I'm gonna say it looks to be about five sevenths. So I could go up here to the balance scale. I copied that just with the C button on my keyboard. I'm using delete on my keyboard and I'm gonna type in five sevenths. Let's see how I did. Uh, five sevenths was too much, right? So it does not take up five sevenths of the square. We could have a good conversation in class with, with some turning and talking about trying to improve that estimate. But now let's, let's continue about how to model this on, on Polypad. I'm gonna hit delete here. And so the first task is to take this whole and split it up into all of these rectangles. So I can see all these places where the lines of the fraction bars are gonna meet each other. So I'm gonna take this, um, this tile that I can change into a variety of rectangles and I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to stop right where I think a fourth and a sixth meet. That looks pretty good, and that might be uh, appropriate for students. For the purposes of this video, I wanna show you how I can be exact in the size of that rectangle. So I'm gonna to go to the drawing tool and click on the ruler, which will draw uh, a straight line, and it snaps to a line that is parallel uh, to the bottom of the screen and the side of the screen, so you can see I get those lines in the exact right spot. Now I can take this and it'll snap right in place, both to the top corner and the bottom corner. So there is a rectangle of the exact right size. I'll use the eraser tool to get rid of those. And now I'm gonna use the C button on my keyboard to make a bunch of copies. I'll click and drag to select all of those. Uh, and so now I've taken this whole and I've split it up into 24 total pieces. Certainly that's an important number here, so I might just jot that on the canvas that I've taken the whole and split it up into 24 total pieces. But here we're starting with a fraction 5 6 and then taking 3 fourths of that. So I first just want to show 5 6 of the whole. I'll do a click and drag to select those, those rectangles that aren't part of the 5 6. Maybe I'll change that to a different color, a light purple. So now here, all of this is five six of the whole, but our question here is taking three fourths of that five six. So I can see in the blue, it's split into four, row, four rows. I only want three of those rows. So this bottom section, I'm gonna change into purple as well. And what I now see here is that there are 15 pieces left in blue. So I took that whole, split it up into 24 pieces, and then we first, um, we highlighted in blue those that were part of the five, six, and then took three fourths of that. 
and we can see that I knew there were 15 left because what's what's in blue here is a five by three rectangle. So as students do a few more examples, we could then have the conversation of the whole was a four by six and what was left was a three by five. I might not do it at this point. I want students to um, try to develop that understanding on their own through a couple more examples, but I can go back to the balance scale and now here I can change this to 15 20 fourths, and that balances the scale. Great. Now, uh, certainly 15 20 fourths can, can be, uh, it can be simplified, but I might encourage students at the beginning of this to not simplify those. I'm going to drag this all the way down the canvas where I want a record of the problems that I've solved. So here I might just do that. 3 fourths times 5 6 was 15 20 fourths. Now, perhaps for some students, working with the area model is not their preferred way to think about multiplication. So I want to take the same question, 3 fourths times 5, 6, and model it a different way with the ability to rename fraction bars. So I'm going to get a, a 5, 6 fraction bar here. I just use the C button on my keyboard to make a copy, and I'll drag it all the way down here. All right. So there is 5 sixths. I need to take three fourths of that, All right? So I can't quite do that yet because this is split into, into five pieces. So I'm gonna to go to my equation editor and just add a note here, this is five six. And I can't split that five into three fourths because the number of pieces in dark blue is not yet a multiple of four. I wanna get that to be a multiple of four so I can split it into four chunks and then take three of those chunks. And we're doing three fourths of five six. I'll use the C button on my keyboard to make a copy. And then in the action bar, there's an ability to rename this fraction. So I rename that fraction, I'll copy this, and now this is 10 twelfths. All right, so this now is 10 twelfths. And again, I want the pieces in yellow to be able to be split into four chunks evenly. 10 cannot do that, so I'll do it again hit the rename button, that is 18 and that is 15 18 15 is not divisible by four. I'll do it again, hit the rename button. Ooh, I see 24 now, and that is 20 24 And what's nice about 20 24 I'm gonna make a copy of this one here, is that 20 can be split into four chunks. It is four chunks of five. So I'm going to use my pen tool here. One, two, three, four, five. There's a group of five. One, two, three, four, five. There's another group of five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's another group of five. And then a group of five here as well. So I see of those 20, it can be divided into four chunks without any leftover. If, if students are having trouble thinking about that because it's 24 fourths, but I'm talking about 20, uh, I could turn off the labels of the fraction bar so I, I could just see the pieces. But here, our question is 3 fourths of that. So here I have four chunks. I only want three of those, one, two, three, four, five. So I've gotten rid of five of them. And now here I can see this as a whole. This is the final answer. And the number of seven of 24 that I have, I could count those. It was 20. I moved uh, the slider down five. So this will be 15 24 And again, that's the same answer that we got in the area model. There's 15 24 If I wanted to find this in simplest terms, I could copy it again and then use the action to rename it going the other way. But again, I can see here that the reason our denominator was 24 is I took these sixths and I split each of them um, into four pieces, right? So if I find the line here, let me get the line here, and I draw this straight down, right? This one six became four pieces. So there's four, and then here's another four, and so on. So I can see that that six times four, remember this was five, six times three fourths became 24. And then the five here, there, in our final answer, there were three of those groups that I've circled in the pen, and five times three is 15. 
So again, this is not something I would expect students to do on their own the first time, maybe some guided examples together. And then what they can do on this canvas, I'm gonna go all the way back up to the top here. They can create a number of different examples that they can solve on their own. So I'm gonna click and drag to select all of the green tiles. Those are our random number tiles. I click randomize and I get a new problem to solve, three ninths times two sevenths. So here I could go three ninths times two sevenths. Now, maybe students think they can do uh, some simplifying with the fractions first. So I could say, oh, is that the same as one third times two sevenths? Yeah, it is. So then they could use the area model to solve one third times two sevenths. They could use the option of renaming fractions to solve one third times two sevenths, however they, however they want to make sense of that. And then if they get an answer, I'm going to copy it and go all the way down to the bottom. Move this all the way down. And hopefully they get an answer of 2 21st. Again, they could confirm that on the balance scale. So they get 2 21st. And maybe you'd have each student do three or four examples. You could have them share the examples with the class. And because they're using the random number generator, you're going to get a wide variety of different fraction problems that students have solved. And if they're able to solve some without the, without the fraction tiles at some point, like great, right? If they just see here, this is one, oh, one eleventh, where's my fraction? There it is, one eleventh times four elevenths, and they can visualize that that whole square is being broken up into 121 pieces. So they know the denominator is going to be something out of 121, and they see that four, and they want to check it. Great. Maybe you have them explain to a, a partner or something, and through this work, they're, they're hopefully beginning to make sense of the algorithm for multiplying fractions. Uh, you can see here on this polypad, there is no tile menu. I have put all the tiles that are needed on this canvas. Here is the rectangle tile. Uh, I can delete these if, if I want to go back to the start. I can, do, I can delete those. I've locked all of that, right? So that will stay in place no matter what. Here, I can just make copies of those. Same with the fraction bars. I'm just pulling off a copy. So I can't delete those by mistake. There are... Uh, in on our YouTube page under the tutorial section, there is a video on how to fully customize a polypad like this. So if this is something you're interested in learning, go check that out. There's a link to this polypad in the comments of the video. Uh, please share in the comments um, any questions or reactions that you have to um, having students use these tools to explore multiplying fractions. Thanks very much for watching.